ready. We should be out there snacking on bad guys. I am a predator. I need to be free. You have got to get control of your aggression, or you will get hauled off into Area 51. You live in my body. You live by my rules. I'm sorry. I don't know what came over me. Please let me fix it so I can fix it again. You are a loser. Hey there. Uh, I'm good, Andy. How are you today? Very excited about start. You're my very first customer. Oh on my this goodness! This press junket for Venom. Let there be carnage. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, so a high bar, like starting right up at the top. So I, I apologize if everyone has to follow me. First of all, congratulations on the movie. Um, one thing that like completely took me aback that I was not expecting to see in a, like any superhero movie, I guess, was tackling some very interesting topics like toxic relationships, a messy breakup. And there's one scene in particular, I don't want to give too much away, but it is essentially a coming out scene for Venom. It's, it, it's, it's a tackled in the movie in a very like entertaining way. But was that like a big kind of draw for you to, to kind of, you know, deal with to topics like that? Absolutely. I mean, that's that's the joy of working in this arena. You know, you get to you get to play with great characters and a great a great script. Kelly and, and based on Kelly and to, uh, Tom Kelly Marcel and Tom's story and and to examine themes in a and kind of in a metaphorically, but in a playful way and, and reach a big audience with, with 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 those themes. And so it's it, it and and that, I think that's that's been one of the great things about about this particular film because it it does kind of go from intimate and uh, truthful, emotionally truthful, dark, right through to sort of the comedic and and through to the operatic. So it's it's got a it's got a, it's a big canvas, and and absolutely that's what drew me to the material because it's it, it is an edgy you know it's an edgy character and 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 and, and well all of the characters have have uh, you know they swim in the darker end of the swimming pool so to speak you know. Yeah, I guess that's why like we're so naturally drawn to them because we're we're used to, uh, you know, Superman or even yourself having recently worked on a Batman uh, movie where the characters they're so naturally good that if they kill one person, it's a huge deal. Whereas we almost want Venom to bite everyone's head off because that's part of the fun of the character. So when you're working with a character who is that edgy and, and that dark, like, are there even any restrictions in how dark you can take it? Well, yeah, I mean, it, you, there are ver various versions of this movie. You could go super dark. You could go R-rated. You could, you know, there could be lots, lots of gore. You could see lots of blood. I mean, obviously, we wanted to, we want to tell this story to a big audience, and with that comes several layers of restrictions. Uh, you know, how much swearing, etc., how much blood you can see, all of that stuff. Um, and and I think we, what we've managed to do, hopefully, is to convey that the darkness without, without uh, sort of without overstepping the mark in that area, which allows us to speak to a bit a broader audience, you know, and, and I think we do push the limits and we, but we just about keep it within the, the remit. Oh, sure. Like the, like there's some scenes in this that I, I was cackling through. There's one in particular, again, keeping spoilers to an absolute minimum, but where let's say Eddie and Venom are having a disagreement in <laughs> yeah. his apartment. And it really reminded me of a particular scene from Fight Club, you know, where yes. uh, Edward Norton's character is going into kind of, uh, get himself fired but it really like called back to, to, to me like were there any particular uh, cinematic touchstones for you from you're like this is the kind of influence I'd like to like inject into this movie well we we, we all all of us felt um that that we wanted to create something that felt sort of 80s actually that, that had the, the, those kind of 80s uh, it is, an, you know, some of the costuming, some of the design, some of the feel of it feels very much a, a throwback to those, uh, you know, thriller, action thrillery type stories and and, uh, and, and Cape Fear and, you know, the, those those sorts of those sorts of edgy, but but really entertaining uh, dark stories. But then the comp then the comedies as well, obviously uh you know the, the the lethal weapon you know kind of odd couple all of those all of those kinds of movies really influenced that 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 um uh spectrum of of uh you know comedy through to through to real emotions and real and real stakes you know and from from your i i assume like you had like lots of great conversations with tom about what he wanted to do both with eddie and with the character of venom like were there any did he have any particular remits when in those conversations with you about 
I guess, expanding or where he would, what he would like to change maybe from what happened in the first movie. Yeah, because because obviously, you know, we didn't want to retell the same story. We wanted to move that relationship on and what would it be like, uh, you know, that, that was their coming together. And then this is their seven year itch in a sense. They've been together, they're the, they are an odd couple living together in an apartment and they're getting on each other's nerves. And, um, you know, it, it's like who gets to who gets to have more me time, really, uh, that 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 whole we wanted to in, enjoy that playfulness and, and enjoy that. Uh, you know the fact the fact of the matter is the great the great thing about venom as a character is he's very upfront with eddie and he he can see and knows all his foibles he knows all his screw-ups all his self-loathing all of his unreliability uh and 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 yet eddie's trying to keep a lid on this as we've sort of called him this this oversized toddler who's just out of control <laughs> and wants to and wants to enjoy the maximum of their potential because they're so symbiotic uh, and and it's just so he's bit but so venom feels totally policed and and he's all the time it's this kind of young this kind of t- kind of teen teenage slash toddler eight foot toddler that's trying to to break out all the time and and uh, so so that 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 sort of side of the relationship is where a lot of the obviously where a lot of the comedy and the and the humor and, and actually the pathos comes from as well and working as a director coming into um coming into like a huge franchise like venom who is in himself a part of a huge franchise within the Spider-Man universe, which is then itself within a huge franchise within Marvel. Like there's all these layers from up above coming on down to the, the one film that you want to make. Like, are there any, or were there any like particular maybe directives given to yourself and or Tom and the writer regarding like, we want to do this little mention to nod forward to potentially where Venom and the character is, is potentially going next. Yeah, I mean, we we were we very much wanted to tell this story, at, you know, as if it's in his own universe at this mm-hmm. point. It, it, it's certainly not. It doesn't really engage with with the uh, the, the greater you, you know Marvel universe or, or you know Spider Man universe or anything, you know. So, it, it, we really wanted this to feel it's it very much its own thing, its own energy, its own. Um, timbre and color and palette and 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 feel and so 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 I think I think that was that was that was the that was the objective mainly. Um, so we were in it we're sort of enabled to to forget about the the, the the greater universes beyond in that respect. And as a director, was there one particular scene or one particular day that stands out in mind? Where like that was the most fun for me to do. <laughs> there were so many. I mean, look, there are scenes between. Um, Woody and Woody Harrelson, who's incredible in the movie, as as are all of our cast, but but particularly the, the sort of the face-off scenes between between he and and Tom, uh, you know, Eddie, Eddie Brock meets Cletus Cassidy, uh, you know, those were those were super intense, fun, uh, you know, brilliant days of 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 seeing these titans kind of clash and 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 uh, were re- really enjoyable, and I, and I just sort of sat back and occasionally and marveled at what they were doing and occasionally you know dropped the odd note in here and there but that what they were doing was so remarkable it was it was like wow i was just it was spectacular and one just one final uh, question um having previously worked with donald gleason and since i am calling from ireland i would like to i would like to give in past like a, a tiny producer note even though i'm not the producer if you are coming back, back for venom 3 uh i think donald would make a great villain for for a future one, I think I he's got it Great villain, yeah. Uh, well, I know at close quarters. I mean, I've I've in, in another galaxy far, far away. I've uh, I've experienced him at close hand. So um, so yeah, no, he's amazing. He's he's terrific. Fantastic, Andy. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thanks, Rory. Oh, where you going? That is a red one. You need to come out right now. I will let you eat. Everybody! Promise! I promise! Oh, yeah! Betty, you feel like home to me. Like family.